You're listening to the Irish Times Roisin Meets podcast. Welcome back to Roisin Meets. Now, I don't know how many of you listening to this will have heard of my guest today. I'm delighted to be on the Roisin Meets Irish Times podcast. If you have any children around the age of 11 in your house, they will probably be able to tell you that the voice you just heard was that of Canadian singer Johnny Orlando, and he is a pretty big deal. It all started when Johnny's big sister asked their parents if she could put a video on YouTube of the then eight-year-old singing a song. Fast forward a couple of years and Johnny, who turned 15 last month, has amassed a following of, wait for it, 10 million fans across his social media accounts. And there are tens of millions of listens on all of his songs on YouTube, like this one called The Most. Johnny is frequently joined on his songs by Mackenzie Ziegler and in December, the pair of them played a sold-out show at the Academy in Dublin and it was only a short time before then that they came onto my radar. I had noticed that a friend of mine had posted a tweet telling of her despair at her daughter's sadness at having missed out on tickets to that Dublin gig. So I chanced my arm, as you do, and tweeted Johnny directly to tell him as much and like the lovely young man that he is, he obliged and got my friend and her daughter onto the guest list. After all that, I thought, well, sure, I might as well head along too to find out what all the fuss is about. And on the way in, I met 13-year-old Laura from County Down and 11-year-old Emer from County Monaghan, who told me what what it is they love about the pop duo. Uh, they're called Johnny Orlando and Mackenzie Ziegler and they sing, they have a song together and they are on an app called Musical.ly and they also are on YouTube. Loads of people like ship Gen Z as if they're like a couple almost so loads of people love them for that. <laughs> and they can sing really well and dance like Mackenzie was known for like a TV show like dancing and singing so. Yeah. When we heard their coming, we were so excited. So Mackenzie, would you say a good role model? Do you think she's a good person to kind of look up to? Yeah, yeah. definitely. And what is it about her that you like? She's, she's so nice and she's and like she's, really positive. She's so humble. So, there you go. That's a bit of an idea about the star quality of Johnny Orlando on Mackenzie Ziegler. I was interested to find out what it's like to be the parent of a YouTube sensation turned pop star. So, I caught up with Johnny's dad, Dale Orlando, who manages his son at the moment before the show. And I asked him to explain how it all began. He was about um, almost nine. So, he was eight years old. It was December. My uh, daughter, who now is 19, was 13 at the time. And um, she said, Dad, is it okay if I make a video of John singing, um, put it on YouTube? And I thought, well, it's kind of strange, but you know, no one's gonna watch this video anyway, so that's fine, go ahead and do it. And how old was he? Uh, he was almost nine, so it was about a month before his ninth birthday. And um, they made a video, that, you know, they recorded it just on their little laptop in the bathrooms because they, they thought that had the best acoustic. <laughs> well, the Beatles did that, so they were in yeah. good company. <laughs> there you go. And they, they put it up on, on YouTube, and I thought, you know, it might get 10 views. Like, my dad would watch it, my mom, and, and uh, probably got, I don't know, 10,000 views. And then they made another one, and it got 50,000 views. And, and it really, my wife and I really just thought it's kind of a cute thing for my little boy to be doing with his older sister and let them have fun with it. And, and it really just took on a life of its own. And did you worry at any point? Because I suppose I have two eight-year-olds and mm -hmm. I'm kind of thinking, and they keep saying to me, can I have a YouTube channel? And I'm like, what even is that? Yeah. But was there any worry about, oh, exposing them to all these people or? Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, the, especially with boys, we worried about him getting bullied. Like other kids at school would think it was funny or goofy and, and um, make fun of him and pick on him. And that did happen. Um, there's also a lot of hate on the internet. So, you know, we have to keep him grounded and talk about at the beginning, especially like, well, look, you know, you've, he would focus on a, one negative comment. I'd say, well, read the hundred comments above it. They're all positive, but mm -hmm. it's human nature. And so people, people say really terrible things. I know. But, um, you know, you, you stick with it. And, and I said, if, you, if it's something you want to do, be proud of it, own it people goof on you and say you make YouTube videos absolutely that's what I love to do I love to sing I love to make these videos and uh, just you know don't worry about it and what's your own background are you a sort of a, a performer as well <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a performer of sorts I'm a trial lawyer so I go into okay. court and I put on a big show but I can't sing a lick <laughs> <laughs> so we didn't get it from you anyway no no my, my mother um, sang Italian opera 
Okay, so it skipped um, but, a generation. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't want to hear me sing. <laughs> but um, he's making a living. I mean, this is the interesting thing about all these young YouTubers. that They're mm-hmm. in their early teens, mm-hmm. and they're sort of... I don't know what the financial thing is, but presumably a bit self-sufficient. And he doesn't need any pocket money from you, let's put it like that. No, he, <laughs> he does pretty well. Um, and that's from advertising and stuff. Is that how it works? Yeah, so, I mean, <clears throat> your typical social media personality has different avenues for making money. Um, YouTube pays, and once you get to a certain level, you can have a YouTube partnership. They run ads on your videos, and then you, know, you get a portion of that. Um, with Johnny, he sells music, so we'll release songs through TuneCore. They get put into iTunes and playlists, and there's revenue generated yeah. that way. He has a, a very you know, so, sizable following for a 14-year-old. He has about 4.5 million um, Instagram followers. So brands, you know, brands consider them influencers. Brands will reach out to them and say, if you, you, know, if you want to target a product to, say, girls between the age of 10 and 15, my son's a good avenue to reach those girls because that's primarily his fan base. Right. And he, you know he has a very clean brand. He doesn't swear. There, you know, he, there's he's okay, there's no drugs or drink or no, anything like no. that with Mr. Orlando. No, no, there's no messy scandals or okay. anything like that. So he's got a nice clean brand, yeah. which um, you know the, the advertisers like. Yeah. Now, so your son is a brand now, and he's 14, mm-hmm. and he's he's doing things, as I said, that are very unusual for most most teenagers. Do you have any concerns about that? That he's, you know, he's getting success so young. Mm-hmm. He's the pressure on him must be quite enormous because he has to produce, keep producing the goods. So, how do you manage that, and how do you manage keeping him grounded, like you mentioned there? Well, it's, he's got three sisters. That sure helps because <laughs> they keep their thumb on him. And yeah. his two older sisters and his younger sister. We we really do this touring as a family affair. My wife and I help run the entire tour. My uh, 19-year-old daughter that started Johnny off plays guitar for him. She's at the show. She she couldn't come to this one because she's got exams. Yeah. But, um, he goes to a regular school. I mean, it's a it's a school for primarily for um, performance athletes, but they work with him so that he performance can be, athletes. Right. So yeah. he's a sporty person as well. He plays hockey two hours a day, but the reason he's at that school is because um, he's able to be away for three or four weeks, and they'll work with him, put everything online, so he can't can't go to a regular public school. Uh, okay. But sure, I mean, it's if you're a 14 year old boy, and every time you go to the mall, people come up and ask you for a picture, or yeah. you know there'll be 850 screaming girls here you know you tend to get a little bit of a big head and but that's our job as parents is to remind him that uh, he still has to clean up after himself and just because he's got a bunch of fans doesn't doesn't change things for us um now so he's he's hugely successful and you're there sort of very much keeping him grounded as well where do you see this all going i mean how what's the kind of possibilities and do you worry about that too that you know you can be up and then you can be down like oh we, we, these are conversations we have. I mean, we sit around the dinner table most nights talking about the shows and the, the tour and music and, and social media. We're, um, you know, we're having some discussions about a record deal right now. So, I mean, it's it's all just we 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 say you've had an amazing success to be where you are right now. It doesn't mean that you're gonna transition into Justin Bieber or Shawn Mendes, you know. But if you keep working hard, there's a chance. So. Um, he's having a great time right now. <laughs> if it fades out over the next four or five years, he had a great run. He made some money, and he and great just, experience. Great right? experience. He's got a confidence level, yeah. and um, I mean, his hope is to be a performer, to be the next big pop star. So okay. we'll see. Well, I'll keep an eye. Now, will you be able to give up your job as a lawyer? Will he be able to put you through the rest of your life now? Will that be no, a bit? No, <laughs> I. Uh, I, I do this as my volunteer job, so I take take holidays and come on the road. But uh, no, I, I mean I'm I'm managing him for now. Okay. Um, you know, we've talked to different managers, and at some point there'll be a, a proper professional team. But mm. because of my legal background, I'm able to do a lot of stuff that maybe other parents might not be able to do. So, um, That's like very I said, handy. it's 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 important for me that we do this as a family because I wouldn't send him off with a manager anyway. Uh, when he's 18 or 19 and he wants to go out on the road on his own, he can. But okay. until then, he's going to have mom and dad keeping an eye on him. Okay, whether he likes it or not. You got it. <laughs> you got it. So that's what it's like to be the parent of a young pop star. But what about Johnny? He was just shy of his ninth birthday when his videos started to amass tens of thousands of hits on YouTube. Did he have any concept at all of what was happening at the time? 
Honestly, not at all. I didn't really know what was going on for another like two years <laughs> until I was I was about ten or eleven, and then I kind of was like, oh wow, like people actually that I don't know are watching my YouTube videos, and now that, that just blew my mind. Honestly, I I just did it for fun with my sister, and then maybe my grandparents would see and they would like it. So that was just the motivation in the beginning. But then you know people were like nice to me, and they're like, oh, you're you're improving, you're better. Yeah. Um, and that, that just blew my mind. It was now, it's, it's quite an unusual job for a 14-year-old. Um, I mean, probably lots of people can't relate. But what, how do you find it now as, as a career? I mean, this is your living, which is incredible. To be making a living at 14 to start, <laughs> no matter what you do. Yeah, honestly, it's, it's kind of kind of crazy. I go to normal school now with normal people, normal 14-year-old kids that play hockey and soccer and whatever else. And they're, they're kind of weirded out by it. And I think yeah. that was the first time I ever realized that like it was kind of different not in a bad way obviously um but they just think it's pretty cool and i think it's pretty cool and i wouldn't want it any other way johnny wasn't the only name on the bill at the academy that afternoon mackenzie ziegler seemed to be just as big a draw among the young fans there she told me how she and johnny came to make music together well our music producers actually got in contact and he came to my recording studio and we hung out for a little while while the parents and where talked. are you from i'm from pittsburgh pennsylvania okay but so very far away really yes him. yeah yes. Uh, kind of not too far not, okay. not too far right. <laughs> but yeah so then we did a song together and and well, how long have you been doing it what, what age were you when you first went on youtube well, I didn't really start on YouTube. I started on a TV show called Dance, Dance Moms. Moms. Okay. And, you Which know, I I'm, also know nothing about. No, Kenzie, it's all right. so you have to it's indulge okay. me. What um, is that show, Dance Moms? So every week we would learn a dance and compete it on Saturday. And in between that, there was just <laughs> drama all the time with the mo- in between the moms. So I feel like. I'm much. I'm really glad that I'm starting to do singing because. <laughs> <laughs> Not your thing. It was yeah. It was a lot of drama and it was too much. So was it essentially a reality TV show? Yes. Okay. Yes. And it wasn't necessarily the best for your mental health or whatever. Is that what you're saying? Yes, I guess. <laughs> I mean, I love dancing and singing yeah. the same, but I feel like I love per- performing on stage for fun than competing with other okay. people. As you heard Johnny's dad say earlier, there is a lot of hate on the internet. And I wanted to know how Mackenzie and Johnny viewed it and whether they worried about essentially living their lives online. When I was there, it was clear that every single moment of their life is recorded and that's just normal for them. But here's what they had to say about the haters. The best way to deal with it is just not to give them a reaction, not to break down, not to honestly pay them any mind because that motivates them, I guess. Whatever problems they have in their life where they feel the need to um, hate on you or put you down or whatever, uh, that's that's their problem and you just need to ignore them. And, and do you ever find it difficult? Do you ever get days where you think, oh, this is just awful and I can't deal with it? You know, when you put something out or if you put out a new music video and you see a lot of hate on it, that's one of the most crushing things. But luckily that doesn't really happen very often and I'm very grateful for that. Um, People seem to like what I put out, which is cool. Um, But it has happened in the past, mostly when I was younger. Well, I feel like it does need to be managed properly because I feel like if we put something out and it gets like leaked or something, which obviously we're not like bad kids, we don't do anything, but I feel like... We get hacked a lot, so... Yeah. Hacked? Yes. Yeah. People so, take over your accounts and yeah. stuff? Yeah, so hey. we used to have, like, private Instagrams, and then people would hack them, so oh it's gosh. really hard to have a private life because I feel like anything that we put out on the internet or on social media yeah. is definitely going to go out. Yeah, my dad tells me to think, like, I'm sending everything to my grandma, and then it gets put on the internet. <laughs> so good. So, so he uses your grandma as a kind of a... Yeah. So would you would you want Grandma Sheila to see this, John? That's and I'm a like, really good. Uh, maybe. <laughs> and you know, it's funny because I think that's really important for everybody because every all young people are doing things as if it's, there's no comeback on it. Right. But actually, you could be in a job, or people could be in a job interview in 20 years, and something that they put on the internet could be brought up. Right. So is that something you're you're aware of that? This is not just in this moment, it's forever. Yes, I think I'm aware of that now. <laughs> like, a couple years it took ago. took you a while. I, yeah, I didn't really think that, you know, that stuff mm-hmm. like that would happen. <laughs> but I feel like now, I mean, I wouldn't post anything, but I feel like I now know what to post and what not to But is it weird as well, people having so much interest in your romantic life? I mean, you're only very young, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? It's, 
uh, normally you want to keep these things quite you know to yourself and you know but this is something that now is, is a topic of conversation so how do you cope with that um I you mean, seem to be able to cope with it better Johnny <laughs> yeah we kind of put it on ourselves I guess because like I don't know, we post together on Instagram. I, well, actually, yeah. we got to bring the kids Okay, well, listen, I, I just want to say thank you very much. It's really nice, nice to meet you. And with that, the very polite young pop stars were whisked away to perform for their adoring fans. It was very interesting to talk to them and a real glimpse into a world I actually knew nothing about. I don't know if I put my own eight-year-old daughters on YouTube, and even though they're always asking me to, but it's definitely a career for these guys and they're well looked after by their parents. It's a real family affair. So, I don't know. I'm still uh, I'm still reflecting on what it will mean for him later on. But at the moment, he's a basically an entrepreneur and a very successful one. And that's all we have time for today. Thanks to Johnny, Mackenzie and Dale Orlando for speaking to me. The podcast was produced by Jennifer Ryan. Until next time, thanks for listening. Listener.